G-Steel GST-B100G Shock. This is some the video. Let's begin. First, I'll remove the screw bar on the side to remove the watch band, and then we'll move ahead to remove all the parts on the watch body. If you want to change the band of your G-Shock watch, this is how you do it. Remove all four screw bar on the side, and then change the band. You will need a 12.8 millimeter center cut out watch band that has a shape like this but just in case you bought a third party watch band just a regular silicon band all you have to do is just cut out the band to a shape like so with a size of 12.8 millimeters and then you could plug it in there but make sure that the third party watch band that you are using could fit a 1.5 millimeter hex screw like this by the way guys the tools i'm using right now aren't actually a hex screwdriver like this one i'm just using this because this is the only thing that i have that could fit into this electronic screwdriver just for convenience the watch is already in used conditions so i don't really mind at this point to scratch it even further and besides but by doing all this process i'm sure i'll damage it even more so the screws is the least of my concern get okay, done removing all four screws next i'll remove the watch buckle if you want to clean your g-shock watch properly this is how you do it remove the screws remove all the buckles or else water is stuck in there and it will rust the stainless steel parts so push the spring bar and take the buckle out pull the spring bar out take this part out and pull out this watch man keeper just in case yours break or if you want to change this to a metal version this is how you do it to proceed even further to the movement we'll need to remove six screws from the front five screws on the side and four screws on the back let me spend a minute to remove all that Okay, and that is a lot of screws. I could take this back plate out and there we have our piezo trick speaker and an instructions on how to change the battery yourself. It operates on CTL920, which is surprisingly small for a watch this big, solar rechargeable. You don't have to change it up for at least the first 15 to 20 years, but just in case it breaks, just replace it following the instructions. But first you have to remove this back cushion which comes in grey matching with the um, o-ring back o-ring which also came in grey look whitish but it's actually grey and that is the battery located somewhere at this 4 to 5 o'clock position which is really incredible the movement is made in Japan and since it is analog and it has a crown or crown operated you only need to remove the crown first and then we could take this movement out just by removing four screws from this uh, third layer actually 
and lift it up like so and there you go if you want to remove dust out of your g-shock watch because sometimes even if you buy the watch brand new there could be dust in there this is how you do it remove the screws from the front and then just blow the dust out like so plug it back in and you are good to go okay since you could remove the bezel from the front there's also an o-ring at the front in black colorway okay before we could remove this side cover it is better to remove or take the movement out or the crown out just unscrew the crown like so but do not pull it out just leave it be as it is and then there's an instructions how to do it there's a push word over here telling you guys what to do and all you need is a spring bar remover tool like this where it has a needle end and push the pin or a lever in there each time you pull the crown out or you push the crown in you can see a lever a tiny bit of lever move in there so very similar as you are removing a crown out of a swiss style watches there we go that is how you do it took me about 10 to 20 seconds but if you don't have the experience of doing this you might end up uh, spending 30 minutes just to remove that tiny crown alone and I need to point to you guys a few things here the difference between a G-Shock watch crown and a regular Swiss watch or yeah, Swiss watch crown is that there's an o-ring in there well so far very much similar so that o-ring is the thing that prevent water from getting inside your watch so that's why it is important for you to screw the crown back down after you unscrew it okay and next is hold on my cat is just I mean, it's like it's uh sleeping time so okay if you look closely at this crown i could wiggle it and i could push it in like so because there's actually a spring built in there so that is the spring that helps with shock absorptions and also to avoid the crown or the shaft from breaking if you wiggle it up as you're setting the watch so there's really neat kind of constructions you cannot seize it unless you take the crown out okay now we could already take the movement out so what I'm gonna do is just push it from the front out from the back like so should be okay and this is the movement which is not anti-magnetic at all you'll see why because well spoiler most of the hands or the gears are made out of metal it is metal and plastic mixed together but they're still made out of metal which could easily affect it with magnetic field and the uh, Hold on, just dropped it and that's okay, it's still working. The movement size is actually okay, there you go. 34.3 millimeters. The movement itself is pretty small, actually. What makes our G-Shock watch big, as I was mentioned, is the padding on the sides. And next is this glass. It is mineral glass, just in case you scratch it, you could Take this piece as it is and polish it up or if you want to replace it find a glass it is just a round shape so it should be pretty easy find a glass that has a size of around 34.99 or 35 millimeters and just stamp it in there you are good to go you could find sapphire if you wanted to since this is just mineral glass next i'll remove this side button guard And there it is. This is a side button guard. If you want to clean it up or just in case your button got stuck, this is how you do it. Remove this thing and then clean the underneath side of this button or just check around here just in case this metal plate, all five of this thing was misaligned and then fix it up, make sure it aligned back into place and then your button should be work again. 
Okay, uh, let me show you guys a few things here about G Steel G Shock wash that you cannot see anywhere else. Okay, this is your first layer. Underneath this is a second resin layer. Then you'll have yourself a third protective layer, and this is your hard case. And then you'll have this fourth layer, I would say. But basically, you have this one first, and then this one, depending on how you view it. And then you have your back cover. The casing as it is feels really cheap, really weak. Like, I mean, it's resin, not glass fiber whatsoever. This is just resin. What makes the watch feel soft and robust is the combination of this, this, and this. That's it. Now, next thing is, is the movement. As you guys can see, there's this white, should I say, movement holder or a piece of plastic that holds the movement into place and make sure that it didn't misalign to this button shaft really neat constructions all you have to do is just pull it out it's just being double-sided tape with this black tape on this side over here which is very visible take this one out and now we have ourselves the movement as it is before we continue even further, I'm going to need to remove the battery and then remove all the hands, all the components from the front and then we'll move to the components on the back. But first, CTL920 battery, just use a needle like this and clip the uh, clip down here at the front. Every G-Shock uses similar type of construction so it shouldn't be as hard. And just pull the battery out. It is really small, I don't have to replace the battery because it is still working just fine but just in case yours already damaged, just find one which I'm pretty sure just gonna cost around 10 to 15 bucks which is incredible cheap plug it back in and just follow the instructions shown on the back of the back plate or the covers uh, in my case still working fine and I have to point out you could hold the battery using a metal tweezer like this you won't get electrocuted whatsoever it could drain the battery but since this is a rechargeable battery you could just plug it back in charge it up and you are good to go now the watch has already stopped working entirely and I'm going to remove all the hands using a simple tools like this. You could use a proper tool, you could spend a lot of money doing the whole process if you wanted to but what I'm doing over here just to prove to you guys that you could work this watch out without needing to pay a lot of money. The point here is to save costs. If you end up spending tons uh, purchasing uh, special tools and such you just better off send it away to Casio and get it fixed instead, you know. I'd rather do this on my own about the watch in used condition. It's already in used condition. There's a lot of scratch already on it. And to be honest, this is not the first time I'll uh, do this. This is uh, the third to fourth time already. So you'll see a lot of scratch already on it because I'm using these tools. And also, I won't be wearing any finger glove whatsoever just to show to you guys that you could work your watch without your finger glove. If I uh, were disassembling a mechanical or an automatic movement, then sure. We're looking at a quartz movement here, guys. You could use all this glove or the protection precautions whatsoever, but I'm not gonna do it. You could do it on your own. Okay, don't just remove the first second hand this is how it look like and front and also from the back and i guess that will be a better angle for you guys and for a better close-up so this is the second hand just now that i just removed and next i'll remove the minute hand using similar method and similar tools
done removing all of the hands now i'm going to show you guys all the close-up just in case i haven't showed them yet and i have to say the uh battery indicator level over here and also the hour hand are the two hardest things to remove but keep in mind the rest are it's really hard to remove as well but those two are the hardest so be very careful when you're doing the process or else you break the uh the hands or even worse you might break this shaft that move them be very very careful when you're doing this if you don't have experience try not to do it okay just as precautions there next i'll remove this index marker which came in silver like most g-shaft watch it is only being double-sided tape underneath it and also there's an led lights over here which is will be removed at the same time as you leave this silver indices index marker it looks like it is made out of metal right but if you look at it from the back it is actually made out of plastics it is just um silver chrome paint on top and make it look like metal plus calcium also add all those texture on it so that helps with the uh, fake appearance as well but still if you want to change this to uh, black out colorway just paint it into metallic black and, and i think it will look much better this is the led light for the watch which is exactly similar like most g-shock watch in fact if you know, yours broken you took you could actually take an led light out of any g-shock watch they usually use the same component and swapped it out or if you want to change the led light to a different color led use the same method take this one out and just plug it back in and then you have yourself a different colored LED lights next I'll remove the faceplate there we go there's also being double-sided tape and the tape was placed around here underneath this G-Shock word so there's the hardest part to remove once you get it out you could just leave this plastic place out let me show you guys where the location is there we go there's your double-sided tape one over here and one over here all you have to do is just remove this and this and then you could remove the entire thing so this is where all the lettering all this battery indicator all the details at um, be very careful not to scratch this but in my case i already scratched it but that's okay the watch is already in use i don't really mind at this point i don't think it's scratching it even further will add uh, more damage to this this watch is already in bad condition and now this is the solar panel it looks very much similar like any solar panel out there and i have to say everything in the watch looks to me like it is in-house made by calcio themselves so try not to break anything next is this ring on the side of the solar panel this is the thing that holds the solar panel it is just being clipped on the side there are four of the clips so all you have to do is just force it up a little bit and it will comes up pretty easily and like that lift this thing up and now this part also made out of plastic it is pretty flexible but do not break this thing and now you have yourself an access to the solar panel and i want you guys to be very careful especially on this area over here because there are two springs that connect from the circuit board underneath to the solar panel on top so be very careful when you lift this thing up there's also a double-sided tape down here so just run a screwdriver like this all around and when you find it there will be a bit of resistance so that's why you know there's the double-sided tape you force it up a little bit and now you could lift this solar panel up so i'll show you guys how the, it looks like from the back and also from the front as well and that is the location of the double-sided tape okay and let me show you guys the springs where is it so down here two gold spring i'm gonna need to use my screwdriver to lift it up be careful not to lose this and this one as well okay even if you lose them that's okay you could find any copper wire as the same size plug it in back in there and just hope that the solar panel could detect that and charge your watch okay now this is the date hands or date marker out of your g-steel model i'm very sure they are similar like any watch on the market uh forgive me for the nails guys anyway 
these are the two gears that move it and just a quick example let me show you guys how it work and there are three screws on top these are the screws that hold this plate this plastic plate that holds these date markers all I have to do is remove these two screws and then we'll have access to all the gears and how they looks like but before we get to that I'm, I think I'm gonna need to remove these screws on the back let's see now there are two of them one over here and one over here After you're done removing uh, the two screws and then all you need is a needle like so and unclip the clips on the side where the uh, the button is connected to. Once you've done that you could leave this uh, battery connector out and there's still a battery holder down there in black and now you have access to the circuit board which is locked with seven screws one two three four five somewhere here six and seven remove all the seven screws and then you have access to all of the coil motors down there and also then you can remove this battery connector on this side but i have to comment a little bit on here because it looks incredibly simple just a few micro capacitors probably bluetooth units over here and there and surprisingly the construction of this model is really really clean Okay, now done and next is just lift this circuit board up like so and that is your coil motors down there but be very careful there's a small springs there in between these two screws there is this do not lose this thing or else your coil motors or your hands won't work If you want to take the call motor out just take it out as it is but regardless I have to comment a little bit on here notice the placement single 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 and double call motors battery placement and how the whole thing affect the uh, the size of our G steel G shock watch so that is why this G steel cannot go any smaller unless they're you know make the coil motor even smaller or just stack them up on top but then again it will make our watch thicker and that is why the gsdb 200 is smaller because instead of using coil it uses digital display that way uh, they could reduce some of the space and you know make the watch smaller so that's the trick but regardless i really appreciate what they're doing over here because if you look at the size of the coil motor and if you compare that to the previous generations there's a big difference anyway lastly let's remove this three screw from the front
and just leave this um, date holder I would say and there's a copper connector of some kind down there where all of this should go for this metal gears three of them so do not lose them this is all the gears and this is your date hand which is also made out of plastic look at all the gears at the front it looks really really neat but when you look at it from the back you'll see all the plastic stem or the mold marks i would say like so okay and i have to comment a little bit on here Look at all these gears, it is made out of metal which tells, which tells us that Kelsey could make like an automatic or a mechanical movement watches but they decided not to in this case, I don't know why, but I'm thinking because of cost reasoning, if they were to use metal in the construction of this part, I'm very sure the watch would be much more expensive which I'm not willing to pay. And I have to point out one more thing, if you look closely, there is some kind of a uh, milling texture there we go I'm pretty sure this is not intentional but I love it it looks like one of those uh, premium uh, mechanical movement but it is not a clean but it has this image on it which is pretty cool in my opinion okay that is all I have to say on this G-Shock watch if you want to know uh, how to fix it up just comment down below if you have any problem any issues whatsoever this is the type of video which i will be referring to and looking for answers just in case something happened this is all the gears how they look like just in case they didn't move they stuck or they break replace them if you find if you could find a replacement which is highly unlikely but regardless perhaps you could inspect your watch in the future just in case something bad happened and Finally, I hope you guys could learn a few things in this video. Purchase link down in the description box if you want to buy the watch. It's going to help this channel a lot. I spent a few weeks just to make this video, so a simple like would be much appreciated. Thank you very much for watching. This is Jeff, and I'm...